speak something about Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and I don't see anybody new here. Is there somebody that does not, that needs an introduction to who was Lord Chaitanya? Somebody need an introduction to who was Lord Chaitanya? Okay, so you all know. Very good. Uh, next week we'll be observing Lord Chaitanya's appearance and I thought to speak something about Lord Chaitanya's past times. <coughs> <clears throat> the, the pastimes of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu are very deep and profound. Uh, oceanic in their mystery. But just hearing the, the, the pastimes themselves, whether we're fully understanding all that's being displayed by his pastimes, that's okay. There's potency in just hearing the pastimes. And I was thinking specifically to discuss uh, the deliverance of Sarva Bhuma Bhattacharya. It's a little background. <coughs> Sarva Bhuma Bhattacharya uh, and his brother Vidya Vachaspati were from Navadweep. The, the age of Sarvabhumbhattacharya was like that of his grandfather. The father of Sarvabhumbhattacharya was a very close friend of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's grandfather. So he was very elderly. And a little history, quickly. Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya was a renowned scholar. It is said in detail that he was, there are six doctrines, sad darshans it's called, about the explanations of the Vedas. And he was master of five of six. And the sixth was the system of Nyaya, or logic, Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya went to the place where the seat of high learning of Nyaya was known, and Brahmanas are supposed to be liberal, so they accepted him in their institution and gave him training in the system of Nyaya but they weren't so liberal in that they wouldn't give him a copy of the text. But that was not a problem for Sarva Bhumma Bhattacharya because he had a perfect memory. He just studied the book and then he went back to Nadia. He wrote the book from memory. So he then became proficient in all six doctrines. So celebrated that um, the king of Orissa, King Prataparudra sent an invitation to Sarvabhuma Bhattacharya to come and be his chief priest, to train everybody in his kingdom and you know, learned personalities in the seat of high learning. And Sarvabhuma Bhattacharya accepted the invitation and so, by the time Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was born, Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya was already gone, which was convenient and part of it, the Leela of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Because later, when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu accepted sannyas at the age of 24, um, at his mother's request, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu went to Puri rather than Vrindavan. And when he entered Puri, there's some detail, interesting detail. 
orchestrated detail uh, such that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu entered Jagannath Puri alone. The, the little bit of the detail is when Lord Chaitanya accepted sannyas, there was a small group, five, that accompanied him all the way from Navadweep to Jagannath Puri. But just before they were entering Jagannath Puri, Lord Chaitanya had requested Lord Nityananda to hold his danda, his sannyas danda, so that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu could cross a river and go take darshan of some deities and come back. And when he came back, Nityananda had already broken his danda. Because Lord Nityananda had an argument with the danda. Danda is just a rod. But his argument was, who are you? My worshipable Lord is Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and he has to undergo an austerity to carry you. He who is the Supreme Lord has to carry a danda and undergo austerities of sannyas. I don't like this. He broke his danda in three pieces and threw it in the river. So there. <laughs> And when Lord Chaitanya asked for his danda, because they were going to, in the near vicinity of the temple, they could see the, the tall dome of the temple from a distance, Lord Chaitanya asked for his danda. And Lord Nityananda said, whoops, uh, you were in a swoon of ecstasy and you fell in the danda, the danda broke. It wasn't true, but he, that's what he said. So Lord Chaitanya said, what is the possession of a sannyasi but his danda? And I entrusted the danda to you, and you've done this? So I don't want to travel with you anymore. You can go ahead to see Lord Jagannath, and I'll wait here, <coughs> or I'll go ahead and you wait here, but I'm not going to travel with you anymore. It was a lila. It wasn't like pouting and... So they said, no, 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 you go. So he went ahead. And when he entered the temple of Jagannath, he saw the deity form and he went into a state of ecstasy, not just seeing Lord Jagannath, but seeing Krishna, holding a flute. And he ran like the wind with his arms outstretched to embrace Krishna. And he fell to the ground unconscious in a swoon of ecstasy. <coughs> and the guards had never seen anything like this before. They thought the man was mad. And so they got sticks and they were going to get him out of the temple room. And just at that time, Sarvabhuma Bhattacharya, the chief priest of the king of Orissa, walked into the temple room and saw the scene and stopped them from beating with their sticks and stood over the body of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu awaiting for him to regain consciousness. But he didn't regain consciousness, so then he was perplexed what to do. He arranged for the body of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to be taken to, um, to his home, which is not so far from the temple. Some of you have been to the, the home of Sarvabhava Matacharya. He was, a, he, was a, he was super scholar, so he knew exactly what the symptoms were of ecstasy. He saw that his abdomen was not moving, his chest was not moving. Apparently, he, he was not alive, so he was very, he was in anxiety. But he knew a little technique to see if he's alive and what's going on. He took some just some fibers from cotton, 
and held the very slender fibers of cotton before his nostrils and found that he wasn't cheating, he wasn't like pretending to not breathe, but he was breathing. His life airs were suspended, but only very slightly moving. So then he concluded from his knowledge and his exact examination of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's body that this was a very rare, un, un, not an ordinary human being can experience what he was ex observing. It was a, a state of, uh, there's a technical term in Sanskrit, but a certain stage of bhava that he understood what, it, what the symptoms were from scripture, from his knowledge of the scripture. And just at that time, while he was doing this examining, the others, the five that were traveling with Chaitanya <coughs> Mahaprabhu, they came near the, the temple and um, they heard already about this young sannyasi uh, that had fainted in the temple room and um, they put two and two together. This was Chaitanya Mahaprabhu seeing the deity. He was in a swoon of ecstasy. And just at that time, Gopinathacharya came. So who's Gopinathacharya is the brother-in-law of Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya. So he was also elder. And like Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya, he had previously lived in Navadweep. So he knew the associates that were with Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, one of them by name is Mukunda Datta. So Mukunda Datta immediately offered his respects, paid obeisances before the elder Gopinath Acharya. They had some close relationship. And Gopinath Acharya, when he saw Lord Nityananda, he paid obeisances to Lord Nityananda, although much younger, because he understood his elevated position. So very quickly, they went to the home of Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya together. And um, Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya was wondering what to do, what to do, because Lord Chaitanya was still in a state of trance. But they knew what to do. They chanted the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra very loudly for some time. And after chanting for some time, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu regained external consciousness. And um, Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya made a f the following recommendations. You all go take your bath in the sea, and meanwhile I'll make arrangements so that you can all have nice Jagannath Prasad. So they did that, and Prasad was arranged. Lord Chaitanya requested just uh, rice and boiled vegetable, simple, sannyasi, fair. And Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya pleaded, no, 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 just take exactly as Lord Jagannath has taken. So they agreed, the meal was served. Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya made arrangements for his assistant to take everybody before the Jagannath deity again, because they hadn't seen, Lord Chaitanya had seen the deity. And Lord Chaitanya was taken to his quarters. There was a maternal aunt of Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya, a residence that was now empty. And so that was the, a quiet and secluded and nice and clean place for Lord Chaitanya to stay, so he was taken there. They went to see the deity, and after some time, um, Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya began having a discussion <coughs> with his brother-in-law, Gopinathacharya. Now, the, it's described in Chaitanya Charitamrita. Sometimes this happens in family relations, 
there's a kind of intimacy. And in that kind of intimacy, family members will sometimes speak in a way that you don't normally speak to other people. Sometimes very sweet, sometimes joking, sometimes scolding. But, you know, it was not a breach of etiquette because of the intimacy of the family relation or the relationship that they had with one another. So, Gopinathacharya was asked by this super scholar, Sarvabhavacharya, can you tell me a little bit about the background of this young sannyasi? He's, his bodily features are outstanding and his demeanor seems very nice. Can you tell me a little bit about his background? So he was very happy to hear that he is also from Nadia, like you and I, and his father is Jagannath Mishra, and so on and so on, giving the description of his family. And Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya understood, oh, his grandfather was a very close friend of my father, and I have highest regard for his father, Jagannath Mishra. I always look up to him as a, because Lord Chaitanya's father, Jagannath Mishra, was a renowned, appreciated, uh, senior person, most elevated person in Nadia at the time. So naturally, Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya said, I have affection for him, just like a just like a family member. And could you tell me, that's the birth, what about his initiation? He's a sannyasi, in what line of sannyas did he appear? Or receive his sannyas danda? So Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya gave the answer. Um, and Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya said, oh, that's an inferior grade of sannyas. If he wants, I know the mantras and I can give him a superior grade of sannyas. And Gopinathacharya was really upset with his brother-in-law. What are you talking about? Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is the supreme personality of Godhead. You've seen his symptoms, and still you don't understand. He's been in your house. How close can you get? And you still don't understand. He's, he doesn't have any requirement of this order or that order of sannyas. And Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya, being a great scholar, said, Whoa, wait a minute. Be careful what you say here, Gopinath, because... Um, you're declaring that he's the personality of Godhead. On what basis do you say he's the personality of Godhead? And the, the first answer he gave was on the strength of realization through the authority of revealed scriptures. That's how we understand. I said, well, wait a minute. Uh, there's no incarnation of the personality of Godhead in this age of Kali. One of the names of Vishnu is Triyuga. And it's because the Lord doesn't appear in this Yuga, Kali Yuga, and so uh, you shouldn't say this, he's the personality of God. It doesn't conform with scripture. And Sarvabhamavacharya cited scripture, this scripture, that scripture, the other scripture, and explained, of course there's incarnation of, of the Lord. In every age, there's yuga avatar. Now, I've not been able to understand why he said there's no lila avatar, but he said there's no lila avatar in Kali Yuga, but Kalki and Buddha, that they're lila avatars in Kali Yuga. So I don't know how he said what he said. Then, then Gopinath Acharya gave scripture and scripture and scripture and scripture and scripture. 
confirming that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, according to scripture, is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. But then he said, what is the use of all of this reference to scripture? You're so dry that you think you're so learned, but even um, having not received even a speck of the mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, you won't be able to understand. That day will come when you do receive his mercy, then you'll be able to understand and then you'll be able to use all your scriptural learning to properly glorify him. So that... There's a sequence. That utterance by Gopinath Achari was very important. That is to say, to get the mercy of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, one receives the mercy of the Supreme Personality of Godhead through one who is carrying the mercy of the Supreme Personality of Godhead or through a representative of him. And Gopinath Achari was such a representative. Now they happened to be relatives, brother and brothers-in-law. But whether it's brothers-in-law or somebody you don't even know, if in order to, this is an important teaching in bhakti, or the import, an important teaching in chattanagati. Um, I'm going to do a little detour here for just a moment. Uh, during the Kartik month this past year, I spent time with devotees in the Dandak forest, or the, the Aranyakanda and Kishkindakanda sections of Ramayana. And keeping it short, because the hands of the clock keep moving, um, I learned a lot from the Sri Vaishnava Acharyas, Jamunacharya, Sri Shailapurna, Ramanujacharya and others in disciplic succession who explain Ramayana is a treatise on Sharanagati. And the Leela of Ram teaches us the principles of taking shelter of the personality of Godhead. And one of those principles, 18 in number, is this one. In order to get the mercy of the personality of Godhead, one has to receive, one must, and it's not optional, one must receive mercy from one who has received mercy. One has to receive the well wishes and benedictions and prayers on your behalf from the personality of Godhead to you in order for the Sharanagati process to move forward. So Gopinathacharya's words become significant because as the chapter carries on or the Leela unfolds, um, Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya doesn't agree. The students of Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya don't agree. They argue, the students argue with Gopinathacharya and Gopinath Acharya says, your idea that truth can be understood by logic and argument is not possible when it comes to the personality of Godhead. You will never understand by that method. You have to receive the mercy. And one day, when you receive mercy, then you will understand. And Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya kind of like cooled it I said, look, we're just family members. We're just having a conversation. Don't get so angry. He made a suggestion. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu then returned. And a suggestion was made. Um, I understand that you are a sannyasi, and therefore I'm at your feet. Sarvabhuma, the elder super scholar, said to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, um, please accept my respects and let me be instructed by you. 
that was an etiquette principle. Because you, there's a sannyasi, although one is elder and learned, one offers all this kind of respect to a sannyasi. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, re, in return, said, you are my superior, and I'm a young sannyasi, I don't know what's right and wrong, please protect me, I consider me your disciple, and give me your instructions and your protection. So he was very mild and gentle in his demeanor. It's very disarming to the proud Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya. So immediately Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya gave an instruction and said, <clears throat> going forward in time, don't enter the temple of Jagannath alone because there was a problem when you did that before. <laughs> Go with me or with one of my associates. And Lord Chaitanya said, I, you know, I'll follow whatever you say because I feel protected by you. So Lord Chaitanya then was offered by Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya, you're very young. You're only 24 years old and your beauty is astounding and to protect your sannyas, if you like, I can give you instructions in Vedanta Sutra so you'll be protected in your sannyas vows. So an arrangement was made Lord Chaitanya accepted this kind offer of Sarvabhom Bhattacharya. And literally for seven days, not seven nights, but seven days, um, Sarvabhom Bhattacharya extensively instructed Lord Chaitanya in Vedanta Sutra. And <clears throat> the description is that Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya sat lower and placed Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in a raised seat above him to offer respect to him as a sannyasi. So he was doing a service to a sannyasi by giving these teachings which he was skilled and qualified to do. And after seven days, with Lord Chaitanya not saying anything at all, on the eighth morning, Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya said, I don't know if you're understanding or not understanding because you don't say anything. Are you understanding? And <clears throat> Lord Chaitanya's reply was, I understand Vedanta Sutra very well. But the more you speak, you're covering the meaning of Vedanta Sutra. It's, it's very uh, difficult. So Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya was a little taken aback and said, well, if you understand Sarv Vedanta Sutra, then you explain it to me. And Lord Chaitanya said, if by your instruction I can do. So he gave such a very simple and concise and eloquent explanation of Vedanta Sutra. It didn't take seven days, it was very quick. And the outline of the purpose of Vedanta Sutra was presented. And Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya was astounded because it was a nice strategy. The problem that comes, it is described a little bit later in this chapter, the, the deliverance of Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya, is he was two things. He was proud. Something happens when people are very scholarly, commonly, not always, but commonly persons become proud of their scholarship. And pride blocks one's vision. Pride, in fact, destroys everything good. It's just, it's, it's a very powerful feature of Maya, pride. So his heart was filled with pride. And the second was, he was accustomed to speculative knowledge. In fact, that's what his students said, because 
um, we can understand the absolute truth by the process of logic and reason, but one can't understand the absolute truth by logic and reason. It's beyond the reach of logic and reason. And if you can't do it through logic and reason, then what are you going to do? Well, you hear from a, an, another method is hearing from those who know. Shabda pramana. Hearing from this descending source of knowledge. The Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya hadn't received that. Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya had received knowledge primarily from the Mayavad school, which is not a system of descending knowledge coming from Krishna. So he was very skilled in his field, but had no access to the personality of Godhead. So then there was some further exchange. I'm watching the clock, it's 18 minutes before the hour. Um, Sarvabhama Bhattacharya said, you're, you're so learned, I'd like to hear you explain the Atmarama verse. Now, Atmarama verse is a verse from Srimad Bhagavatam, which apparently was even celebrated amongst Mayavad scholars because he was asking Lord Chaitanya to explain it. And Lord Chaitanya said, you're my superior, you're very learned, can you explain it? So, certainly I can explain it. And he gave 16 different explanations without crossing over other explanations. And then he requested Lord Chaitanya to explain it. So this Atmarama verse is a celebrated verse. It, it, it means those who are Rama, they're experiencing happiness within Atma Rama. Um, they, they're in this very, very special position. They're realized souls, and there's detachment from the illusion and attachment to the Absolute. So the way that Lord Chaitanya explained, it was done, is a whole chapter, an entire chapter, very bewildering <laughs> details of the entire chapter of Lord Chaitanya's explanation. And hearing this explanation of Lord Chaitanya, a little light went on in Sarvabhuma Bhattacharya's head, where he suddenly realized this isn't just a learned sannyasi, this is the personality of Godhead. And so he had received the mercy of the Personality of Godhead through starting with Gopinathacharya, being wishing that upon him, and then receiving it from Lord Chaitanya, the mercy of the Personality of Godhead. He could then understand the Personality of Godhead. So Lord Chaitanya confirmed you're not just a sannyasi, but the personality of Godhead. There's different versions. One version says, Lord Chaitanya then showed his six-armed form, sad bhujas, six-armed form. Two hands holding a flute, another two hands holding bow and arrow, ram, another two hands holding danda, his sannyas rad, and Kamandala, water pot of the sannyasi, in his spiritual form. That is to say, Lord Chaitanya showed to Sarvabhamavatacharya his divinity. He had understood his divinity through the mercy of Gopinathacharya's well wishing and prayers and Lord Chaitanya's sound vibration because, remember, for the tenth time, he's super scholar. So he can best understand things through his acumen, through his, but his acumen, his scholarship, had become dull by pride and speculation. 
But now just by hearing, just by hearing, directly from Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he realized his divinity. And he was overwhelmed with that realization of his divinity and then Lord Chaitanya confirmed, showing his six-armed form. So imagine what feelings Sarvabhama Bhattacharya was feeling. He fell at his feet. Is that nice? Painting on the cover of the book. And offered prayers and prayers and prayers and spontaneous <laughs> prayers in Sanskrit. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu we withdrew that sadbuj form. Now he's just standing there as a sannyasi, smiling. It's now confirmed. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is the personality of Godhead. Whereas before, he was considering him to be an ordinary person. He's no longer considering him that way. The narration goes on. Shortly thereafter, one early in the morning, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu went to visit the temple of Jagannath, see the deity in the early morning. The pujaris gave him some garland of the deity and some prasad of the deity, and Lord Chaitanya immediately went to Sarvabhuma Bhattacharya's home. He was still in bed. He missed Mangalarti. <laughs> And while still in bed, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu gave him Jagannath Prasad. And immediately, Sarvabhambhattacharya took a morsel of the Jagannath Prasad and started eating. And Lord Chaitanya said, Whoa, Sarvabhambhattacharya, what are you doing? You know the rules, because brahmanas live by rules. And the rule is, you don't eat before bathing and worshiping your deity and so many other things. You don't eat. Only eat after all those things. And then Sarvabhama Bhattacharya quoted scripture, saying, when one receives the prasad of the Supreme Lord, one should immediately accept. And other verses, even if it's stale and old, you immediately accept. And Lord Chaitanya was very happy, saying, it was, it was, he was examining Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya to see, has he really become a Vaishnava? Because before he was the opposite. He was, he was a scholar, but not understanding the conclusion of the scripture. Now he's reached the conclusion of the scripture, and he's become a devotee of the Lord. And his faith was being tested, examined, by taking this Mahaprasad early in the morning and immediately accepting it. So he's now in the mood and reached the conclusions of a Vaishnava by all those events, the sequence of events of mercy. And some time passed and Again, Sarvabhama Bhattacharya invited Lord Chaitanya to come and accept meals, a meal at his home. And, Lord Ch and Sarvabhama Bhattacharya took the opportunity to ask an important question. And the question was, out of all the different good things that one can do according to scripture, what's that one thing, is there one thing that's most important? to do out of all the good things, elevating of consciousness things. And Lord Chaitanya immediately began explaining the Brihat Naradiya Purana verse of chanting of the holy name. Everyone knows this verse. Hare Nama, Hare Nama, Hare Nama Eva Kevalam, Kalo nastyeva, 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 gatir anyata. Lord Chaitanya explained, he recited the verse and explained the verse, that this is the most important thing, the chanting of the holy name. 
above all other things in this age of Kali. It's the means of deliverance, it's the means of purification, it's the means of attaining the goal of life, Gatir Anyata. And Gopinathacharya heard this nice explanation and um, said to his brother-in-law, so Gopinath saying to Sarvabhava Bhattacharya, I told you so, <laughs> <laughs> that when you get the mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, then you'll understand. And until then, you won't understand. But now you've understood, and now you're able to quote so many scriptural verses that confirm this proper understanding. And then Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya said, rightly, it's because of your mercy. Because you're very dear to Lord Chaitanya, and you are my relative and you've been kind upon me, I've received the mercy of Lord Chaitanya. And because of your kindness upon me to receive the mercy of Lord Chaitanya, my life has completely changed. So his pride was taken away, and that's specifically said. His being learned wasn't a problem. His being proud was a problem. <clears throat> Not like you have to be a simple person. Being a simple person actually is helpful. But whether you're not a simple person or a complicated person, <laughs> a, you know, a, a not well-read person or, or a, a very, very well-read person, either way is not a qualification, disqualification. It's having received the mercy of the personality of God, and even a simple person, even a simple person can understand the conclusive truths of the Vedas by the mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. It's described like this by the author of Chaitanya Charitamrita. One who receives the mercy of Lord Chaitanya, they may be a lame person, they can climb great mountains. They may be a blind person, they can see the stars in the sky. They may be a fool, but they can understand the conclusive truths of all the Vedas. So, receiving the mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, it's not like a big mystery, it's just getting the association of one who has received the mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and having proper regard. Now, the, it, in that section, it again says, the exchanges between Sarvabhuma Bhattacharya and Gopinathacharya were a little puzzling to outsiders, but there was, it was with great affection. They had great affection for one another. So I don't know if you've noticed it. Sometimes there are persons that have such affection for one another, they talk with one another like, Whoa. Sometimes, like, I mean, sometimes it's exactly nasty, but sometimes it's just, they're, it's a happy exchange that outside people really can't understand. So it was like that with Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya. Gopinath just wished well for his brother-in-law. And he spoke strongly when he was going in the wrong direction with his ideas and his thinking and his pride and the misuse of his scholarship. But by the mercy of Gopinath Acharya, it all became aligned properly with Lord Chaitanya's mercy. And then he could understand things that normally people are unable to understand. And he, so that the, the, the that section of Chaitanya Charitamrita said, it's the deliverance of Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya. The deliverance of Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya. And he became a great devotee. He had thousands 
of sannyas students. And when he became a devotee, they became devotees. They had great faith in him and trust in him and regard for him. He became a devotee. They became devotees. And in, in, in turn, in course of the rest of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's Leela in Jagannath Puri, he had a very significant role. He was the most learned priest and scholar of the, of the king. Very influential person. And so naturally his devotion for the personality Godhead was able to influence and affect many, 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 many people. Of course, there's many wonderful associates of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu that similarly uplifted uh, people in general. So, um, maybe you'll be inspired between now and next Monday to read some of the pastimes of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in anticipation of his uh, observing his appearance day. I'm sure there's going to be a nice big festival here at the temple. I'll be somewhere else <laughs> having a big festival for Lord Chaitanya. But the whole world of ISKCON will be doing a big festival for Lord Chaitanya. It'll be nice. So I'm going to end because it's just about 7 o'clock and see if there's any comments before the conch blows. <coughs> comments or questions? <coughs> yes? access to understanding the essence of bhakti through Lord Chaitanya, then how is it that we are um, directed Bhagavad Gita first, understanding the Gita uh, and the Srimad Bhagavatam long before we go into Chaitanya Charitamrita? Well, if you like Chaitanya Charitamrita, go for it. <laughs> <laughs> but you'll find if you go for it, while there's abundance of mercy, there may be some things that you're reading and hearing that have your scratching your head. And if you go back and read the foundation of Bhagavad Gita and then Srimad Bhagavatam, you'll understand better. Here's a little explanation Similar. It's different, but it's similar. Um, Canto 2, chapters 1, 2, and 3. Shukadeva Goswami starts to speak. Before then, he, we don't hear him saying anything. When he speaks, he's responding to the question of the king, Prikshit. What is the duty of a man who is about to die? And what is that subject matter that one should hear, chant, and always remember? And the first thing he speaks about is the universal form. The next thing he speaks about, chapter 2, is the Paramatma feature. The next thing he speaks about is devotional service to Krishna, change of heart. So, hey, why not just go to Krishna, devotional service, change of heart, because that's the real deal. But we won't properly understand the real deal if we don't understand the preliminaries that lead up to the real deal. And it not only happens in Canto 2, it happens again in, in Canto 3, it happens again in Canto 5. And all of that comes before Canto 10. You know, the sweetness of the pastimes Let's go to the sweetness of the pastime, that we won't <clears throat> properly understand Canto 10 without having gone through Cantos 1 through 9. We'll get something for sure. 
So you go to Chaitanya Charitamrita and you get something for sure. But to understand and receive the fullness and the depth of what Chaitanya Charitamrita has to offer, we need 101 and 201 before 301. But potency is there and mercy is there and go for it. Okay. Yes? Here's the conch. Go ahead. Go ahead. There were many other Vaishnava Acharyas like Madhvacharya, Ramanacharya, yeah. who have written several works right. on Vedanta Sutra and many other works. Right. So, why is it that the uh, prediction that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu will appear or Lord Krishna will come as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu not predicted by them in their communities? Well, he's Chana Avatar. That's a short answer because of the Kanch. He's the hidden form of the Lord, and so he doesn't, they, they didn't reveal that explicitly in the writings but he came in a covered form. His devotees directly understood but the predecessor Acharyas didn't reveal like that. Chana Avatar. Okay? Even during Lord Chaitanya's lifetime very few understood later after his departure more understood and more was written about his divinity, but during his lifetime, very few had that understanding realization. It became known after some time by his own arrangement. The Yogamaya curtain was withdrawn and Shri Shri Radha Gopi Balabhaki. Yeah. Mm-hmm.